How you guys and girls doing today? It's your boy Timson918. As y'all can see, we've got the FedEx attire on today. I'm um, just going to be talking to y'all a little bit about FedEx in general. Uh, y'all know I always like to do videos when I start working at a new job. Lord knows, I mean, shit, this channel is like half a job channel and a gaming channel. Um, shit, I got like how many jobs I've got them in my damn belt? I don't know, like 12, but... Um, yeah, y'all, so let's get right into it. Like I say, hit those buttons, like that like and sub button down below if you enjoy this kind of stuff. But um, let's get right into it. So I got into FedEx through the wonderful app that we all know and love indeed, right? I applied for it, and, um, you know, the one thing that I would say separates FedEx from the other jobs, like I've worked at FedEx before as a uh, package handler a couple of years ago, and I also worked at USPS as a driver for a couple of months. I think that was like two or three years ago. Uh, the one thing is a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is that uh, FedEx is in union, and we'll get into that way more later on in the video. And uh, number two, the good thing, I guess you could say, is that they pretend to look after your health. They want to make sure you're at least healthy or close to it because, uh, you know, after you apply, they'll reach out to you. You know, you got to do all the bullshit, right, like filling out your information and everything, and then you take a piss test. Um, and then they'll have you do like a DOT physical or at least my uh, station, the DSP I was under did, or I keep calling them DSPs, contractors is a better word. Um, so after the, uh, piss test, I had to take a, um, DOT physical test and like, you know, that's when they, um, just check, make sure that you can see, right. You can hear, uh, good and everything. Make sure your weight and your height are good enough and uh, your blood pressure is good, right. You know, have no back problems, no heart problems. Because uh, this job is can be extremely physically demanding. Um, so I'll start off because right now I'm still in training. I haven't gotten out on my own yet. I'm supposed to be doing that next week. But um, I am on like, I'm about to be on my second week of training. And um, so first week, uh, first day I go in. Now, I want to emphasize this about the training. And this is what I said about, you know, earlier with the union thing. FedEx, at least where I'm at, bro, has no fucking training. It is absolute shit. I mean, there's there there is no formal training. Like I said before, with USPS and other companies that are union, they've got like an actual system that you go through. Like you know, it was annoying as hell, but it taught you everything that you needed to know or damn near. You not only did ride alongs and shit like that with uh, other drivers, which is what I did, um, but you also did all you know other shit like. Uh, my bad, y'all got a phone call. But you also did other shit like um, you're able to, uh, like I said, go to class and learn about a whole bunch of things. They let you drive for like several weeks with like a trainer. You got certified. I remember having this like little small ass card uh, after, you know, they thought you were competent enough with the truck itself, um, learning the ins and outs. Like you learned everything you had to know to the point where they were oversharing information, right? FedEx. I don't know, like I said, if it's because they're not union or because of the specific area that I'm in or because they're backed up or what, but they legitimately just drop you off with another uh, driver and that's it. Like, and it's up to that driver to determine how trained you're going to be. Um, me right now, I'm actually driving to a station that I'm not going to even be servicing. Like, I'm not going to even be in that area. I'm driving fucking an hour and 30 minutes away. And two hours back with the traffic um, to an area that, uh, you know, I'm supposed to be training at uh, because apparently the area that I'm going to be uh, in mainly, like the area that's closest to me, only 45 minutes away, uh, they don't do training at that facility, even though, like, once again, like I said, it's not training. Um, so, yeah, you know, first day I show up and I'm going to call the trainers that I had S and C. Um, but, you know, I show up. My manager's there. Uh, he picks us up in his own truck because uh, he's just like, hey, you know, I'm running late. So I'm sitting in the parking lot for like 10 minutes before the manager shows up. And uh, he picks me and these two other employees up. Um, he drives his truck um, in the back, like all the way to the back. And like we get out and everything. He goes over the, the rules and the regulations and, you know, typical bullshit. The company is always going to tell you, like, they care about you. They care about your safety. You know, all the lies. Right. And just be real. Um uh, they, you know, handed you some papers and stuff like that, tell you to fill out. This is for taxes and W-2 forms and also filling in your direct deposit. So basic stuff, right, first day. Uh, on the first day, it depends on where you're at, like I said, but we immediately got started, like, with um, driving along, like, doing ride-alongs. So I was with 
um, someone, like I said, I'm just going to call him uh, S. And he is an amazing driver. Like, he's an amazing driver and an amazing dude. And not only that, like, he overshares to the point where it's, like, helpful. You know what I mean? It's not like he's saying, like, useless stuff. He, whenever I would ask him questions, you know, he'd be enthusiastic and excited to help you. You know, he would show you certain things on the scanner and how they work. He would show you, uh, you know, how to go to certain stops and things like that. You know, what to do in certain situations if you can't scan a package or if an error pops up or, you know, how to, uh, you know, scan the package and leave it for a customer or whatever, get signatures. I mean, he was going into detail about everything. So I learned a lot from him. Uh, comparison to C, now, like I say, no disrespect to C, um, but um, yeah, I learned more in like 30 minutes from S than I did with C in like two days of training with him. So that was my first week. My first week was from uh, last, it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I was off Saturday and today, which is Sunday, and then I go back Monday through Thursday this coming week again, and on Thursday, hopefully, they said that by Thursday, I should be driving a full route or damn near by myself, and um, I should be back at the station that I should be at, right? But, so, let's say, first day, you're in the truck, you come in, um, the way that they had it is, he, like, my manager pointed to S and was like, okay, you're going to be riding along with him today, so just get in the truck with him, and uh, he'll show you what to do. Most drivers, they show up to the warehouse around, um, you know, I mean, all drivers have a different time that they want to show up. It really uh, depends on the kind of driver. Uh, because some want to get in there as early as they possibly can uh, because you're able to organize your truck. You have people who are, like I said before, a FedEx um, organized, like the truck organizers or the FedEx uh, warehouse workers, and they'll organize your truck for you. But some of them just don't give a shit. Some of them will just like throw your packages in the truck. And if you come in extremely late, like if you show up there, you know, say 8, 30, 9 o'clock when most people are about to leave or have already left, then you're going to be falling behind for the day and your truck is going to be horrible. Like it's not going to be organized at all. So, you know, a lot of truck drivers, like I said, to mitigate that, they'll just come in early. Uh, they'll organize their truck and things the way that they like it in order from, you know, their what their scanner says, like their route all the way from the first stop to the last. And uh, that was S was doing. And like I said, from the very beginning, you know, when me and S started talking, he introduced himself. He showed me how he liked to organize his truck. He showed me like, you know, what to do with smaller packages compared to the heavier ones. Uh, you know, he showed me the little trolley. It's like this little two wheel thing that you got to pull out the truck. If you know you have a bigger package, you think you just can't pick up and carry to a door. Um, you know, he was showing me, like I said, scanner things, what to do. If, you know, there's a dog um, and a whole bunch of other things like that. When I when it came to um, C, so that was I was with C on. Wednesday, I believe it was, and Thursday and Friday was with S again. When I came to C, he was the complete opposite. Uh, you know, he just told me straight from the very get go. He introduced himself and everything, but he was just like, "Hey, I like to, uh, you know, I like to listen to music and podcasts and stuff like that when I'm on my route." And like, we talked a total of two or three times. You know, what he would do um, and what S would do is like, you know, they would scan the package, they would find it, or sometimes if they wanted me to get the training, they would tell me to find it, or S would do that. He would tell me to go find it in the back. And, you know, he would scan it or have, you know, uh, me scan it. And then I would deliver it while they stay in the truck. And we would switch roles like that. Um, you know, C was the complete fucking opposite. Like I said, he put his earphones in. He was just like, yeah, like, so I'm going to be delivering. And, uh, you know, I'll just scan the package. You just run it out to the mailbox. Run me, run it out to the door, run it out to the garage, whatever. And uh, like I said, we talked like a total of three or four times. I learned a couple of things from him like he wasn't a bad driver he was an excellent driver he could back up like crazy and shit i hit the curb like five times when i tried to drive the truck and we'll get into that later but um yeah you know he barely talked at all like there were some things on the scanner that i didn't even understand such as like how do we clock in how do we clock out do we have to use different apps to do that uh, how do we log in where do we find the scanners and then like when i asked him uh that at the very beginning he'd be like oh yeah let me show you that so essentially y'all you even though you shouldn't have to do this if you don't get good trainers man if you don't have someone like s in this example that go takes the initiative to treat you as if he uh is your trainer and like cares about you you need to ask questions and if you don't ask questions you're absolutely fucked because when i ask like certain questions they'd like see would just be like oh yeah let me show you this and i'm just sitting here like holy shit bro if i had two shitty trainers right true trainers and like i said both of them were decent i'm not bad talking to either one but um uh where c was exceptional i mean s was exceptional but um if you have shit trainers 
you're not going to have any idea what you're fucking doing. Like, I know so many people who have told me straight up that they went up into the warehouse on their first day of being by themselves and didn't get out of the warehouse until 12 o'clock in the evening or like in the afternoon and didn't get back to the station until 11 at night simply because they didn't even know how to use the scanner. Like they didn't even know how to package their truck correctly. They didn't know anything. They didn't know how to fill up the damn uh, truck with gas. Like just simple things, right? Because like I said, there's no formal training. Like there's no uh, system in place. You're just tossed with people and it's like, hey, good luck, figure this shit out, right? Um, That being said though, I believe, uh, so the first and the second day, if you, y'all's contractors or anything like mine, and by the way, I didn't know if I said at the beginning, but this is FedEx ground. This is not FedEx express. FedEx express might be different, but this is ground. So you're delivering like the heavier packages and stuff and you're working under a contractor. But, um, yeah, so we, uh, we go and I think the second day, no, no, not the second day. I think it was the third day. So Wednesday, I believe it was is when I started driving for the first time. And what he had me do was he just had me uh, drive to a certain uh, pickup. And y'all will learn what that is, but it's pretty much when like you actually have to pick up packages from other businesses or other customers, scan it, and then return it back to the warehouse and leave it on your truck um, for the package handlers to get at the end of the day. But, you know, the um, he let me drive there and then he let me drive back to the station, right? Um, and yeah, like, man, driving those trucks, if you have no experience with driving huge ass trucks like that, it's going to take you a while. And maybe not, maybe you're just going to be naturally good at it. But I hit the curb like five damn times when I was with S anyway, not with C. When I was with S, like, you know, I'm driving and stuff like that. And like, I'm about to make a right turn. And of course, a truck like the size, even though I wasn't driving, like, you know, there's three types of trucks. You've got the little minivans. Um, you've got the uh, bigger 700 trucks and then you've got what they're called like P700s and you've got the bigger P1000 trucks like they're they're like the biggest right and um, yeah every single one of them is going to be bigger than a sedan obviously or your standard truck so you know I'm I'm here and and I'm about to try to make a turn and stuff like that and I don't go far enough so I I turn turn my wheel to the right way too early and boop hit the fucking curb I did that shit like five times I didn't have it backed up into anything um also, when I was returning back to the warehouse, you know, like the, the warehouse parking spots inside the warehouse are tight because obviously the trucks are side by side. And so, you know, like I'm backing up as I'm trying to back up into the uh, parking spot, I almost like clip a damn cardboard box or clip like a, a guardrail or something like that. I, it took me like five or six minutes to reverse and back up into the uh, the truck spot. But um, yeah, that was just me. Like I said, maybe y'all be natural prodigies at it, but um yeah, so you'll start driving um, a little bit after like the third or the fourth day, uh, maybe even the fifth day. And on my last day on Friday, what I did was uh, I was with S again. Um, so I knew I was in good hands, right? And uh, we got finished around. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. So it really depends on um, your trainer or, or, you know, your trainer, the, the driver that's with you. Um, it really depends on, uh, you know, how fast I like to do things. Like some people like to do it by the book. Like, for example, you know, you scan a package and it'll say something like, uh, you know, you can choose something like meet customer or something. And what will happen is if you do meet customer or met customer, uh, you don't have to actually take a picture of it. You know, FedEx started doing that thing a couple of years ago that Amazon does where you're required to, if you're leaving it somewhere that's not with the customer, uh, you have to take a picture of it. So you're leaving it at a, like a garage or a porch, front door, side door, whatever, you got to take a picture of it. But if you just hit meet customer after scanning a package, you can just go. So, you know, C, when I was with C, um, you know, he wouldn't do that. He would like to do more things like by the book and shit like that and when i was with s he was completely different right uh you know most of the time he's been around i think he said he's the like been around the most in that specific warehouse um seven years or something so he knows a lot of customers are home they don't care he'll just hit meet customer drop the package off it saves you a couple of seconds and those seconds add up trust me um you don't have to like take a picture then you just run back to the truck and go on to your next stop uh, with s i was getting done around i believe four 430 something like that with C on my first day with him uh, it was around five o'clock we didn't get back to the warehouse till 530 and then we had a way lighter day the next day when I was with C and we got back to the warehouse at like 410 420 something like that so you know we get back to the warehouse and um, like I said it took me five six minutes to back up to the spot but uh, you know 
when, once we get back and everything, what ends up happening is that you're supposed to, you know, clock out uh, on end of day or something like that on the scanner and like punch in like an odometer reading for the truck and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, clock out, you know, do all your sign offs and everything, then you're good to go. Um, but the so I'm going to get into the positives and the negatives of the job. I was about to think about something, but I completely forgot what it was. I was, I was talking about when I got back with. Uh, oh, no, no. So it was on Friday. So on Friday, what I did was I did half the route. So what we did was we split it. Um, S did the first half of the route. And he thought he was slick too. Like I didn't peep it. Like he has a route that has like a whole bunch of businesses and businesses, you know, if you have businesses on your route, another side tip, um, it's going to be quite annoying if you live in the city because businesses uh, require a signature a lot of the time. And once again, like I said, when I'm with S, you know, he doesn't do things by the book. He wants to save time. Businesses don't care if you just like scribble, scrabble some kind of signature and then write like a like first or last name or something like that. Businesses don't really give a damn unless you misdeliver the package or something super important. Right. Um, C, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. Like he wanted to go into every store, get all the signatures, all that other shit. And it's just too much. It's way too much. Um, they would get mad at you if you got back too late anyway, I'm assuming. But, um, yeah, so S did the first half of the route. And like I said, he thought he was slick because he did the residential part of his route. So he did the, you know, the, the country and, um, I'm sitting back and I'm, I'm still getting out. I'm still, you know, when he parks, getting up, going to the back, scanning the packages, opening up the side door and taking the packages, running back and forth and shit like that, getting out of breath. And he's the one sitting in the truck after he pulls up. But after that, uh, we take a little break or whatever, and, um, you know, I'm doing the uh, city area. I'm doing the businesses. So I'm going in and out of, like, things like uh, Chipotle and Papa John's and these busy-ass, you know, shopping centers and stuff like that, uh, walking inside of, uh, you know, Altas and uh, Giants and things. And um, so that'll probably be probably around your fifth or your sixth day. So you're, like, at the end of your first week, You'll probably, if it's anything like what I did, be doing half of a route. And then this week, so tomorrow, I'm assuming, up until Thursday, I'm assuming that I'm going to be doing that a lot more. So every single day, I'm probably going to be splitting a route with somebody and still be riding along with them. And then towards the end of training, what my uh, one of my managers said is that I'm probably going to be taking an entire route off of somebody or I'm just going to be ha having, I'm going to be with someone and uh, I'm going to do the entire route with that person in the passenger seat. So that's probably what's going to happen. And then after that, you know, I'm going back to the area uh, that I'm supposed to be in. So I'm going to talk about the uh, now the negatives and the positives about the job. So I'll start off with the positives, right? Uh, positives of the job is that once you get into the rhythm of the groove of things, um, I've seen both C and S and other drivers do it. Like it really is just rinse and repeat. You know what I mean? Um, some people will sit there and say that like, oh, like you feel like a robot uh, doing the same thing every single day but that shit that's most jobs anyway right let's be real but um you know you really just get into the rhythm and the pace and like you understand the route and you understand where you're at especially after doing it for so many years or so many months weeks whatever uh you just chilling you know you're chilling you're vibing you're on your own and it leads into the other point which is yeah you're on your own you're 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 your own boss um no one is really micromanaging you, depending on your managers. Once again, this depends on your experience with your managers, but managers weren't blowing up my trainer's phones. They weren't, uh, you know, saying, hey, you got to do this or, hey, why you stop here for this long? Like, you know, you once you get out of that warehouse and you're on the road, it's just you. And yeah, I mean, you can do what C did and just um, or not C, R. I said R and S, right? You know, you can do what R did and just, uh, you know, vibe out, put in some AirPods, listen to music, listen to podcasts as you're delivering. And, um, yeah, as long as you're, you know, doing your, you know, you're doing your own thing, you're doing it right. You don't have any problems that day. Um, another good thing about it is of course you can take your breaks whenever you want to. Um, like I said, you're not union. So not like you, USPS, uh, or other jobs like that. They don't take that 30 minutes out of your, uh, paycheck. So you don't have to, take a break if you don't want to you know you can just go straight through it that's what uh s and r told me that um that they both uh just like to go straight through their route like they're you know you want to come in um and just get it done as quick as you possibly can uh, another thing about it is um 
it's salary, right? So depending on your area, it really depends on the area, depends on your contract and a lot of other factors, how heavy uh, the load is, what kind of trucks you're driving. But um, like I said, it's salary. My area specifically, I think they said it's either it's between like 170 to 200 dollars a day or something and like if you're on the lower end like 170 185 something like that then you're probably delivering between um 100 to 150 something packages people who are up in the higher echelon i guess you could say the upper echelon of things they're going to be delivering probably over 200 plus packages the ones who are getting paid um you know over 200 210 20 a day i mean driving the bigger trucks as well um and that's also a double-edged sword too and uh but i'll get to the negatives in a second and i'm trying to think of the other positives that i can that i can come up with um uh yeah i mean that's another thing of course that leads into that is that since your salary um you can get done early and get paid the same as someone who is going to take two times as long on your route so you are someone who's super fast you're young agile you can go in at seven o'clock leave the warehouse at like seven thirty eight or whatever get done by two o'clock in the evening um and be back to the warehouse by two thirty or whatever the case may be and you're good you are uh you getting paid the same as someone who's still out there on the road as you're on your way home uh, so that's really good if you like i said you hone your craft with the job now <sighs> holy jesus jesus mary and joseph in the manger Let's get into the negatives. I'm not trying to be a negative person or, I, you know, I'm not a negative person. I'm not trying to be a, you know, downer here, but let's get into the negatives with the job. I'm going to take a quick break for a second. So I'll be right back in the flick of a lamb's tail. All right. Just like that, I'm back. So the negatives, y'all, this is this is just personal for me, but it depends on where you're at. Right now, I'm driving an hour and 30 hour and 45 minutes away in two hours plus back because of the um you know the commute and the traffic i'm actually living in a uh country area but that is all the way up in the city so the you know that's the very first uh thing that's wrong right there hopefully y'all don't have that experience hopefully you have a warehouse that's close to you and hopefully that warehouse also does the training um so that way you know you don't have to travel like out of your way and you know don't have to sit there and not understand where you're going to be on your final like actual day or first day of being by yourself and stuff like that and that's the second point of course is that since i'm somewhere else that i'm not going to be servicing uh, when i get back to my actual spot it's 45 minutes away so, and i'm decently i'm kind of familiar with that area but it's going to be like uh, still like a brand new area to me so it's going to take me a long time to get used to where everything is and you know gps and all the other stuff um number two i've already gone into it at the beginning but the training training is non-existent man like you have questions ask questions like just ask 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 that's one of the things that i messed up before on previous jobs is that you're afraid to piss anyone off uh, or at least piss anyone off that can control your paycheck or uh you know have an effect on the job right and you, you know, you don't want to ask questions. You don't want to bother people. And, uh, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're, you're just going to be doing nothing but hurting yourself. And at the end of the day, the other drivers don't really give a shit about you. Right. Like, and that leads into the third point. But yeah, ask as many questions as you can, like get to know your route or get to know um, what you're going to be doing. Get to know how the scanner works. Get to know where to find the scanners at when you get into the warehouse. Get uh, to know how, like how you're supposed to inspect your truck. Get to know how you're supposed to load your truck. Get to I mean, like I said, there's hundreds of things that you'll learn along the way and certain things that you can only be taught via experience. But learn those things and don't be afraid to ask questions even if you've got someone like c or i keep on saying c uh, r whatever the other guy was r or c was the mediocre s was the uh good dude but um you see you might have someone who's put their headphones in and shit like that and yeah that leads me to my third point the third point is it, it kind of goes with the second point but you know it's it's um it's like working at an amazon warehouse right if y'all ever work warehouse job jobs everyone's mean mugging you like no one looks friendly no one no one is going to uh, i had one dude who was also a trainee with me who was nice enough to come up to me tell him his name and stuff like that and, and like yeah because you know we were talking a little bit uh on our first day and then like you know he said he didn't have experience with the trucks either and i told him i was like yeah man i've already hit like five curbs um 
But other than that, man, like you're gonna have a whole bunch of people just looking at you and shit like that, you know, mean mugging you. You're a new face, right? Uh, people might not talk to you and stuff like that. And um, like I said, I don't blame the drivers for not wanting to train. And I've even told the other drivers that I told S and R that I was just like. I understand that y'all are just people who are trying to get your work done and go home and you don't want the weight of someone else not knowing what they're doing to slow you down. Um, and it's just like the fact that they had this shit set up like this is stupid. Like, it's just dumb. The fact that, you know, there's someone who's just trying to get their job done and now they're just thrown like a little workout buddy or like a, a you know, a work partner that they didn't really ask for. Um, at the same time, though, I would think that, like I said, I'm using R as an example. I would think that, you know, you would be more like S and hopefully, you know, drivers out there, if you're listening to this, that you'll be more like S and that you would uh, take the initiative to overshare or help someone that was in your previous position when you first started. But like I said, I understand why you might want to be like R and just have your earphones in and completely ignore the trainee and just do your own thing because you're like, I didn't ask for this shit anyway. I'm not getting paid any extra trainer pay and like, you know, he'll just slow me down or her will just slow me down. Like I understand that. But like I said, training, you know, two and three is about training. Training is like dog shit, non-existent. Um, what else? Uh, trucks are old. You know, that comes with the territory. Y'all wouldn't be surprised if y'all have been drivers before. Uh, USPS, like I said, they've gotten updated trucks. The FedEx has not. As far as I've seen, they're the old ass 1990, 80 trucks might as well be the first cars that came out uh, ever. Right. You know, they they. Uh, headlights barely work windshield wipers just do nothing but smear rain all over uh the truck so good luck seeing um tires and shit like that be busting on the regular the uh, truck feels like you're sometimes when you press on the gas you can be at a stoplight light turns green you press on the gas as hard as you can and the the engine is just like kicking like so you're starting to accelerate slowly going an extra five miles every like two uh five or ten seconds but it's kicking like a like a malnourished horse, you know what I mean? Like it's do 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 do, and it's not even going. You know, truck shutting down, engine lights and shit like that. Oil lights consistently coming on. Uh, it's a lot cheaper for a contractor to, I suppose, consistently fix the trucks than just hire uh, or buy brand new ones. So yeah, trucks are gonna be shit. So you know, you, you'll get used to that pretty fast. The turning radius, of course, like I say, huge trucks. You might be familiar with them already. You know. Turning radius is this dog shit. The, I mean, you when you turn the truck too, um, I don't know what the hell's wrong with the damn wheel. I mean, the tires, I'm not tires, damn it, the wheel. But man, it like it feels like you're trying to, like, I don't even know, wrangle a fucking lion or some shit. Like you know, you're turning the wheel and you have to pull that wheel as hard as you fucking can, like to the left or to the right. Like you're breaking a sweat in the truck just trying to make a turn because the wheel is not going to turn smoothly. The wheel is like stuck in place almost but um you know i'm trying to think what else what else we got we've covered the main thing the main thing is like is the training because it you know that'll lead to more issues when you don't know what you're doing at the very start um and uh then and so one more thing is the the pay right it's a double-edged sword because on one end, like I said, your salary. So you're going to get paid the same amount as someone who gets done two times or takes two times longer than you. But, yeah, if you are getting paid a certain amount of money for your area that you don't consider worth it and it's taking you a very long time, if you don't master that learning curve, um, you're going to be out there. You could be out there for 12, 13, 14 hours and you're going to be getting paid the exact same. That's the that's the flip side to it. That's the uh, double edged sword that hurts right there. You know, you're not, uh, people are going to be, uh, getting to the station. And I'm assuming this is probably going to happen on my first couple of days, not even trying to be negative or anything, but you know, being brand new, uh, scanners and shit like that, being brand new to the area, not even servicing the actual area that I'm going to be in, you know, I'm pretty sure that, um, and a lot of other shit that I'm going to be missing. It's, I'm probably going to be getting back way later than everyone else. Uh, but, like I said, that's a learning curve kind of thing. So it really depends on uh, if you think that the salary you're getting paid is worth it to get adjusted to that learning curve as you are uh, going going on it. But um, uh, I think that's it. I think I've covered the majority of things that we had to talk about when it comes to FedEx. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, like I said, I am not officially out on my own just yet. Um, but 
I'll be driving a lot more, I'm assuming, this week. And then by the end of this week, I should be at the station closest to me. And I'm assuming once I get there, you know, I will have a better understanding of the area that I'm going to be servicing and how everything actually works. Because, uh, you know, I forget a lot of shit. So, you know, yeah, that's going to be it, y'all. Oh, no, one more thing, too, actually. So with dogs, here's a big thing for a lot of people, right? dogs now me personally i've told my trainers i've even told my manager this like straight up if you got a problem with it find me i don't give a shit but um you know if you feel unsafe and this is just me personally talking you know what i mean i'm not going to kiss up to fedex's ass uh if you feel personally unsafe don't get out of that truck scan the packages undeliverable or if you really have to if you're close enough to a mailbox, put it in the mailbox or toss it by the mailbox or toss it by a uh, gate. Because, you know, I had this one example for y'all. We were in the country when I was with uh, R, right? I don't know if I've been saying C the majority of the time, but like I said, S is the good dude. R is like the, or C, whatever I was saying. R is like the mediocre guy. Um, I was with him. Like I said, he's listening to his music and stuff, vibing out. I'm not learning anything, pretty much. Um, I'm also hot as shit, and uh, the, the seat... The passenger seat is like uncomfortable as hell, but, um, you know, we're, we're going up to a house and, um, you know, th there's like a dog, uh, so like, a a big Husky, right. A, a big, like Husky mix or something like that. I can't remember. Um, uh, and it runs up to the truck and it's like, just, it's panting and his tongue is out and it looks like it's smiling. Right. And, you know, he's just like the same thing. He goes in the back, grabs the package, scans it, hands it to me, and then gives me the scanner, tells me, all right, go ahead and run that to the front door, run that to it. And I was like, oh, okay. I said, do you want me to just toss it out on the grass right there? And he was just like, oh, no, 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 no. You just got to run it out to the uh, car. And I was just like, do you see that dog? And he just, he looked at it so nonchalantly. He took out his headphone. He was like, or his ear pod. He was like, ear pod. He was just like, oh, man. He said, yeah, mm. I don't know. He looked at me. He's like, I don't know. That dog, he, he doesn't look like he's angry. And I was like, I told him, I said, motherfucker, I don't care how the dog look. I don't give a damn. And then, like, I said, okay, let me try something. I didn't step out completely, but I opened up the side door. I opened up, like, the uh, my door. And, like, the dog went from, he was sitting beside the truck by the, uh, the passenger t uh, front tire. And the moment I opened up that door, he went from calm, cool, and collected, his tongue out panting, to straight up aggressive Cujo demon mode. I mean, this fucking dog, he just got up, started barking, foaming at the mouth. Um, you know, like he almost hopped in the truck. He was running around like he, he, he was aggressive. Like you could clearly tell that if I knew for a fact if I stepped out, I was going to get bit. Right. And I, he was just like, oh, yeah, he doesn't look friendly. And then the dude going to look at me and say some shit like, oh, that's just the name of the game. And I was like, the fuck you mean it's the name of the game? Nigga, what are you talking about name of the game? He was just like, oh, man, sometimes, you know, everyone's gotten bit. And I know this. He, he started telling me these stories as if it's like a badge of honor, if it's like a normal thing. Talk, talking about this dude got uh, his calf muscle ripped off by some kind of pit bull or some shit. Or, you know, he was surrounded by a whole pack of dogs one time that were unleashed in the backyard that he didn't see. He went to ring the doorbell and was walking away. The dogs came up from behind him, bit him in the leg and then bit him in the front. And, um. I told him, I said, okay, so once again, I'm going to ask you, I was like, do you want me to scan the package and just throw it on the grass, try to cram it in the mailbox because you're going to have to get close for me to do that or we're going to scan it. It's not deliverable. He was just like, oh, man, I just don't know. He was, And he then the um, owner came out. You know, owner's going to say the typical bullshit they always say, just dumb and goofy as hell. You know, owner's going to say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And, oh, my goodness, you know, you know, I'm so sorry about that. And I'll take the package. You could have stepped out, though, because he wasn't going to bite you and look dead at the owner. And I was just like, I'm not risking that. He, she was like, oh, you know, I mean, he was like, oh, you know, it's, and he's all barking, no bite. You know, he just likes to try to scare off potential people and, and, and everything. And I was just like, okay. I said, yeah, have fun. I said, yeah, and put him away. That's exactly what I said. I said, put him away next time. And, um, yeah, you know, the, that was the most that um, R had talked to me compared to s and i told him straight up as we were driving away i know i'm rambling right now but i told him as we were driving away i was just like if you weren't here the only reason that we were taking up that much time at this particular stop is because you're here and you're trying to debate with me whether or not i'm going to get out and just, or just toss it on the grass take a picture of it or scan it if you weren't here when i'm on my own i'm not doing that 
like if I see it, there, it's one thing if you get out and you know you're at a in the front of a house or something like that, or at a garage and you don't see a dog, and then the dog comes around the corner because you didn't expect it. It's a whole different thing if you know you see a dog in the driveway or in the you know grass or whatever. Don't risk that, y'all. Don't, don't. And on top of that, you know, people get killed out here for stuff like that. You even if you defend yourself, you're gonna still be in in the wrong in the eyes of the. Uh, the owner, you know what I mean? You carry some kind of knife or a blade on you. You carry some kind of pepper spray or dog spray. You go to attack the dog and the owner is going to attack you for doing that to the dog. You know what I mean? Like there's no win-win situation here. There's no situation that it's worth the risk of stepping out. If the customer, the way that I see it, if the customer complain, and they always say the managers and everyone else says the same shit, right? They always say that bullshit. Um, safety is our number one priority. Okay. Okay. Nigga, say so this is the number one priority. So be it. So if you know you don't feel comfortable man do not get out that truck if you want to toss it in the grass i'm mean, hey look look i ain't saying you should you probably shouldn't do that it's against protocol but you know uh if that's what you got to do do it if you want to scan it as undeliverable scan it undeliverable take it back to the warehouse customer starts leaving personal notes and starts complaining you can put in, um, in a request or whatever you drive by that house the next time customer comes out and start complaining you tell them to put their dog away for when you're here or when you're doing they're expecting a package they don't want to comply they don't want to do that tell them they're just not going to get their package simple as that keep scanning as undeliverable or they'll eventually reroute it and send it on someone else's route or something like that i you know that is just something for me personally i don't put up with i don't debate you know what i mean um, so safety, y'all, that's the number one thing. Last tip I want to leave y'all. Um, I'm pretty sure I missed things. I'm trying to think right now before I wrap up the videos or anything else, um, that I missed. Um, like I said, you you know, you'll get used to this truck, uh, over time. Like I said, shit, try not to hit curbs <laughs> or hit shit as you're backing up. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered the majority of the things that we've had to talk about. Uh, physically, right? Physically, uh, the job is definitely going to be a wake up call, right? Uh, I was not really working out for like the past couple of months to a year and I put on a few pounds and stuff like that. And it's definitely a reality shocker. So if you're overweight or, um, you know, you're looking to lose weight, looking to stay in shape or something like that, or get back into shape, FedEx is definitely going to do that for you. Trust me, you will definitely start losing weight. You know, you're looking to lose weight a fast way. Uh, you you know, that's going to be extremely um, a favorable thing to work at FedEx because you're going to be breaking a sweat. Even if it's cold as hell outside, you're going to be breaking a sweat. Um, make sure that you're bringing oh, another thing to make sure, you know, you're bringing plenty of water. Uh, you know, you're bringing plenty of snacks and stuff like that because you're going to be consistently burning calories, getting up, getting in and out of the truck, running up and down driveways and through garages and, and of course if you're in a city area you might have to carry some heavy shit up and down apartment ladders i mean apartment steps and shit so you know make sure you're always consistently uh trying to stay as healthy as possible and um drinking plenty of fluids because you know yeah you will get tired very fast i mean within the first hour or so like i'm not you know fucking extremely in shape but i'm also not like obese fat albert either right um but like within the first on my first day and it was like 70s, 80 something degrees outside uh, wearing shorts and, and the shirt that they gave me, you know, within the first hour, an hour and a half, I felt like I was about to damn pass out because of heat exhaustion. Luckily, the dude I was with, S, I don't know, like I said, exceptional dude. I don't know if he either peeped it and saw that or, you know, he was time for his break. But that's when, you know, you could stop and we got some snacks and, and, and drinks and shit like that. But that's it for now. You know, let me know down in the comments below, y'all, if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them the best to my knowledge and the best of my ability. Uh, and like I said, um, if I'm not dead, if I don't die, uh, then, you know, I will continue to update y'all um, as this week goes by. Like I said, I go back tomorrow. Today was Easter Sunday and I was off Saturday, so I had two days off. Everyone, that's another thing, too. You'll get two days off. Um, hopefully, hopefully, depending on the area that you're in, you should get, you should have two days off. They might not be side by side. Um, and another thing too, see, look, I keep finding things as I'm going. Another thing is that, um, with your, with your training, your training schedule is probably going to be different and the pay you're going to be getting uh, during training is going to be different than when you actually start. Like I know that my manager told me, uh, my current manager anyway, the facility I'm going to told me that I'm getting paid a hundred dollars a day right now. And training and my off days for training are Friday and Saturday. When I go up to my facility that's going to be closest to me, 
Um, my tr my pay goes up to like 185 or 180 or something like that. And uh, my days off are going to be different. So I'm going to have to coordinate with my uh, manager down there at my official route. But, you know, you'll find that out as you go along. So, yeah, y'all, I'll update y'all. Um, like I said, I've got another week at this damn facility, man. It's, that's the only thing. I'm, I'm rambling now, y'all. So the video is officially uh, done for those who want to click off. Uh, but, you know, man, this this hour, this is just commute, y'all. This shit whooping my ass, man. This a brother is back to slave times with this shit. Like this is opposition. This is adversity to the highest degree, to the highest form. You know, man, it's it's opposition. Like I, you know, I'm going. I wake up. I gotta wake up at five thirty in the morning and leave the house by five fifty to get there at seven thirty. And then, like I said, depending on if I'm with S or C or uh, S or R. And uh, depending on who I'm with, we're probably going to get done around 4 30, 5 o'clock, something like that. I get back to the warehouse and then I need to drive home. It's, yeah, 4 30, 4 45, 5 o'clock. I don't get home until like 7 or 8. I still like to work out and do like an in home, like a um, home program. I don't know if y'all know, it's called like Insanity or Insanity Max 30. It's like a, uh, like a workout program you can do at home. And I still like to do that once I get home. And hop in the shower, eat and everything. By the time I do all that, it's like pushing 9 or 10 o'clock. You know what I mean? You got to go straight to sleep if I want to get eight hours of sleep. And, you know, your body is fucked up. You're tired as hell. Um, but once that commute shrinks down, man, that's the biggest thing I want to just get over, y'all. I just want to get past this, this last fucking week of training and just get this shit out of the way. Another thing, too, even though I'm, I'm nervous and hesitant because I haven't experienced these trucks. And I've already hit the curb five times. I haven't backed up into anything yet. Actually, you know what? Let's keep it positive. I'm not going to say I'm never going to back up into something. But um, getting used to these damn trucks, man, like the truck, it, it, it'd be a lot better if they ran good. But like I said, these bitches are from the 1900s. I mean, these bitches is older than me by a lot. Like, you know, the, the, these should have been out of commission years ago, decades ago. Um, but, man, like everything about them trucks is ass, like everything about it. You know, it's, it's got the windows. You got to turn. You got to crank to put down the windows. Air conditioning, heat, knock on work. Feels like I'm back at USPS several years ago when they had them old ass trucks before they got that uh, much needed upgrade. But um, yeah, man, I just want to get this last week out the way. I'm not looking forward to waking up tomorrow and like like a lot of people and looking forward to going to work and and, and driving that damn commute. I don't know how people do this shit. Rob, I'm from the country. Man, like, like the most of the shit my entire life, my 26 years of living, most of the shit that I needed has been less than 30 minutes away from me. Sitting in five minutes of traffic pisses me off. I'm like, what the fuck is this stupid ass shit? What's going on? Well, you know, the crazy thing about traffic, too, the shit that be pissing me off. This, this might be a video for another time. I'm just rambling now, but I'm going to say one more thing. The thing that piss, motherfuckers just be rubbernecking, bro. Motherfuckers just be and rubbernecking for those who don't know. It's an older song, Elvis Presley song, but it's it's. It's when, you know, you're looking at something and the re and it slows down traffic because you're looking most of the time when traffic is piled up, you think it's some some kind of huge collision. Like I'm thinking it's like some kind of huge accident. Someone's died. There's a whole bunch of ambulances or police officers blocking the road. There's some kind of barricade or something like that. It'll be on the completely other side of the interstate. It'll be on the other side and traffic is backed up on our side. And it's all because people are just fucking rubbernecking. People are just looking over their shoulder, being nosy as shit, trying to see what's going on. And because of that, they're stopping and slowing down, pulling off to the side of the road, trying to take pictures and take videos and shit. And that slows down the trip. Like, bro, I cannot stand this city shit on baby, on my mama. I cannot stand this shit, y'all. This shit is dumb. I can, Like I said, I cannot wait until I'm in my area, man. You know what I mean? So, y'all yeah, update y'all on uh, after this week. Um, you know, or if anything crazy happens or if I learn anything new, uh, that I, uh, want to share with y'all, I'll learn. I mean, I'll, uh, you know, update, I'm in another update video, but most likely I'll just wait like one more week until the end of the, this training, um, the training finalizes and stuff like that. I don't want to drive the fucking trucks again, bro. But you know, the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give y'all an update. I'll let y'all know. And, uh. Yeah, that's it. You know, I'll, when I I'll give two updates and the next one, of course, is going to be when I'm actually on my own. And, uh, you know, they say that they they give you a uh, uh, what's it called? They give you a um, a nursery route or a smaller route 
on your first day. That's what they should do. That's apparently what the manager that I'm talking to at that facility I'm going up to now says. He says that they should give you a nursery route on your first day by yourself and there should be people there to help you so your manager should be there to help you give you a quick refresher let you know everything you're doing right or wrong or help you figure out a scanner help you figure out your, your truck or whatever and then they should be giving you like a route so if a normal route in your area is like a hundred and let's just say 160 stops 170 stops or something like that then they should give you like no more than 100 stops on your first day or maybe even your first week driving by yourself to get you accustomed to it and there are th oh that's another thing i forgot Got God damn it. Um, there are, uh, and I, I guess you could say it's a positive um, and a negative, depending on how you look at it. But if you're out for too long, if you're out for way too long, people can come rescue you. You know, there's something called rescues, right? And it's probably good to be on the receiving end of one, but not uh, the one going to rescue someone, I'm sure. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, what will end up happening is if you're out for way too long, and they can tell you need help because they can track you on the device. Like I said, they're not micromanaging you. No one's tapping into your uh, your your phone or tapping into your um, your scanner. No one's talking to you through the damn camera. Um, but if they notice that you're stuck for a long time at a particular stop, way longer than normal, or you know they see that you're the last truck out there and you're not even halfway done your route, they'll more than likely come send someone. And that's what they also told me as well that they should they should send someone out to come help you if you're struggling on your first day first week you know first couple weeks whatever the case may be on the other side though i know that they like to say um and this is you know the other the double-edged sword part i heard that they um if you get done too early see the trick that uh, s was telling me like i said s is phenomenal compared to r but um you know if you get done way too early and they notice that you're either required to call your contractor manager or um, you're required to go help somebody, like depending on uh, the situation. Like they, they like to say bullshit. That's what it is. I just say it's bullshit. Like, oh, it isn't fair if you get done early a lot of the time. And if you go back to the warehouse and just leave, you might get in trouble. Now, I might do that anyway. But no, you didn't hear that from me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, um, what you're supposed to do if you get done before two o'clock. Your manager might just take the initiative and, and be watching you on the scanner and might call you anyway and uh, tell you to go help somebody. Or you're supposed to call back and say there's anyone out there that needs help. Nine times out of ten at every station, there's probably going to be someone that needs help. And, uh, yeah, you think you're getting off early, but you get a call saying that you need to go help someone and take half of their route from them. Hey, take half of their packages and go deliver it. Uh, so like I said, that's the double edged sword with that there. Now everyone's experience is different. I'm sure there are FedEx drivers out there who just got tossed to the fucking wolves. I've been reading that on, on uh, different platforms that some people, you know, they've gone through the tr same training experience that I have, which is dog shit, right? No training, no actual training, just being tossed with random people who don't give a fuck about you, who just look at you as like, why the fuck are you even in my truck? Right. And, um, well, are not S, but, um, and you know, they finally get out on their own and shit like that. And when they get out on their own on their first day, they're given 200 plus packages. They're given, they're just tossed the most toughest route and told, hey, good fucking luck. And they don't get help at all. Like no matter how much they're struggling, they try to call their manager, their manager don't pick up, but their manager says, hey, you're, you're running pretty late. You need to figure your shit out, even though we're not going to send you help. So it really depends on your experience. Every experience at every job is different, but you know, that's, that's what they say. Anyway, they say that they're there to help you. So I will update y'all. That's the last thing I'm going to say, because now I'm rambling, but I will update y'all, um, either within the next couple of days, like I said, if I have any more updates for y'all or, uh, at the end of this week, this coming week and let y'all know how much of a, a different experience this week was compared to the last, uh, the first week of training. And then of course I'll definitely update y'all when I start driving, uh, by myself. Hopefully I don't fucking hit any more curbs or back up and hit a damn truck as I'm trying to back up into the parking bay or, you know, the main bay. But, um, yeah, y'all, that is uh, it for now. I will catch y'all in the next video. Tim918 out of here. Love you guys. Hit those buttons down below, like and sub button and all that stuff. And please, 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 if you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave the comments down below. I will try to answer anything that I possibly can because I want to see y'all succeed and I love helping people and like S I don't want to leave anybody hanging and, and feeling unsafe and uncomfortable and not knowing what the hell they're doing so let me know if you got any questions and I will see y'all in the next video bye bye